Hey, yo, what is up guys, Zingcraft here. Welcome back to another new video. In today's video, I wanna talk about something that um, made me really emotional, made me, um, it was just, I guess, I should say, a satisfying conclusion. And these are my thoughts about Attack on Titan 139, AKA the final chapter. This is going to be a spoiler and non-spoiler review, so um, non-spoilers start in a few few seconds, and then spoilers will be after non-spoilers. I'll put a timer, so if you've already read the manga chapter, uh, you can skip to that, or if you haven't, you can ignore that, and know that's your point to leave. So yeah, that will be in the comments. Anyways, let's begin non-spoilers. Wow, um, this was the first story to have ever made me cry. Because the ending is not happy. It is and it isn't happy. But mainly for my favorite characters, it's not a happy ending. It's not. And it just made me really emotional. It made me cry and I just... Wow, this story that I've only started getting into two months ago, and then it ended yesterday slash today. Well, for me, it was Wednesday, but wow, just such an emotional and crazy end. <sighs> wow. So yeah, that's that's a non-spoiler review of it. Um, Anime only, you better be fucking ready for next year because you will cry. It is no doubt that you will cry at these moments. And just just get, prepare the tissues, prepare the damn tissues, prepare the coffin, all right? Because you're not gonna be happy. Um, and also, uh, manga readers, who haven't reached that point yet, also be ready because, wow, what an ending. Anyways, let's get into spoiler territory starting now. So, um, I've been trying to do this whole spoiler territory for around an hour because I always do it very wrong and poorly because I want to speak from the heart about how it made me feel and my theories and everything. But I'm just doing a bad job because I don't have it scripted and I don't want it scripted. I want to speak from the heart and everything. So let me just make this a bit fast on some of my thoughts, but but then kind of get deeper and everything. So let's let's begin. The ending really did uh, uh, tie up pretty much a lot of the loose ends, I guess. Well, no, I guess I guess it was just a satisfying conclusion. Sort of it mainly explained Aaron's motives and everything giving giving the sad end and everything and that was obviously really emotional for me and everything. It's just the fact that Aaron doesn't get to have the happy ending because of the sad truths of destiny. He Honestly, I was re-watching the series to get prepared for this chapter, but then I obviously read the spoilers and everything, so so I c couldn't really f get to this point, but I remember just uh, re-watching it on, as a YouTube clip. They hand kiss and how scared and shocked Aaron was after it. I think it, he tapped into the future and the past memories of him. Uh, finding out that he killed his mom and and he would have to die the villain so Mikasa and Armin could be the heroes. And it's just really sad because I was rooting for Aaron uh, Aaron when the rumbling started to happen. I actually rooted for him. I, I felt very, I guess, connected to that. And I thought, and I was really saddened when I thought he wouldn't achieve his goals. But his goals from the whole time was just to, just to cause, 
cause uh, not only some a little bit of peace for paradise, paradise. I still don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Um, and to also cause the whole hope that they have to fight fight hope and realization i guess and yeah hope because if armin can vanquish Aaron, they can do anything they and that's mainly what i think it was um uh the whole the whole um sacrifices he had to take and everything uh was just just crazy and I can't believe that he got, he had to do all that. And it, it's really, really saddening. Because I really felt connected with Aaron and everything. And, you know, I think everyone should be connected to the main protagonist. That's why I love Naruto so much. Because he reflects me a lot. But then, uh, me and Aaron as well. I feel a connection and I feel like I feel like I'm a lot like him and everything uh, so yeah it's just it's just wow when they when they started cradling his head and crying over him that's where I broke down that's where I realized this is real this is heartbreaking and everything and and wow just just so so saddening. And Mikasa walking away, holding the, holding his head to her heart, just broke me down even more. The whole burial, um, I felt was a great connection, and the more uh, people do investigation, clue seekers, the more it makes sense that it was hinted from the very beginning. It's just crazy that it would be that way. It's like. I don't know if Isayama had the full picture, but I think he had most of the picture. Because there was like a cross or something carved on the tree, and that is the exact spot where Aaron's grave is. Oh my god, can we talk about the grave? At first, I didn't know what it read, because obviously no one would, except for uh, Japanese readers who uh, know how to read the, the symbols. Um, I didn't know what it read, but then someone translated it on Twitter, and I broke down. Uh, I want I want to find it, but I I'm just gonna shoot from I'm gonna shoot from the hip and try to think of what it was. I have most of it in my mind. I think it was. I have most of it, my beloved. Rest in, uh, rest peacefully. Eight hundred and fifty-four. I think it's missing the top part, but wow, that Mikasa wrote that. She really did love him so so much, and that is just so 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 heartbreaking, and everything. And then her breaking down on the hill. I broke down there too, and it just was so sad. Now the bird. I want to talk about the bird part because something interesting happened. When I first read the non, when I first read the half translated one, it wasn't it wasn't the official translated one, but it was from the raw and then slapped over the text they can translate. But something changed. I actually think no 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 wait. Yeah, I think it changed again. So. When I read the, when I, when it actually released, uh, I noticed a difference at the bird scene. Now, it goes the same way, but the thing is, it cut out Aaron, which was a weird thing to think about. I don't know if they did that because people were dissatisfied with the fact that Aaron became a bird, or Mikasa thought he became a bird, but... Uh, it wrote down, it, uh, it wrote down, um, it was basically the same, except for, you wrapped the scarf around me, 
or thank you, you wrap the scar. Thank you for wrapping the scarf around me as the bird flew away. It was an Aaron, you wrapped the scarf around me. Thank you. Which kind of made me a bit sad because because I liked that ending, the fact that Aaron would be reincarnated as a bird representing the wings of freedom and he would finally technically be free. But the thing is, he cares about Mikasa so much just to give a sign that he's still there for her. There for her? Sorry. It's just very, very, very sad, very heartbreaking, and it's just, wow, Isayama is a genius. But I don't know why they cut out those lines. And if you don't believe me, I will take a screenshot and and post the differences on my Instagram, but then I will also share it in the description of this video, where I got, where the site I use in the description of this video, so you can understand what I mean, and I'm not lying about it, which... Which is really sad that I'm not lying about it because still, why the hell would you cut that part with Aaron? Uh, Mikasa thinking it's Aaron because what kind of bird would wrap the scarf around her? I mean, the bird would just take it and fly away. But Mikasa, uh, but Aaron just wanted to wrap it around Mikasa, and that means that he kept the promise of always wrapping the scarf around her. That's oh god, that's heartbreaking, man. And the art. Some people have made. The art, man. Oh, it breaks me even more. I saw this one. Uh, and I'll link it in the description below. Um, it is Aaron and Mikasa at a wedding. And Mikasa is cradling the head. Or cradling his head, right? And then there's another picture with a darker turn. With, with blood on her. On her dress. Or crying while holding the severed head. That one. Oh, that one was... Oh, that was brutal. That was fucking... Man, way to rip out my heart even more. So anyways, um, those are my thoughts. I had a lot more to say about the whole memories thing and uh, the whole talk with Armin and Mikasa being the key to uh uh you to ymir uh finally letting letting off the curse and taking away titans forever uh but i i kind of can't do that because i always screw up and i don't feel happy with the final product so this is way shorter and i kind of like that so yeah <sighs> anyways everyone yeah i i just wanted to share that and everything and uh, I just want to give one final thanks to Isayama, Hajime Isayama, thank you so much for this series, this was incredible, what a journey, I may have joined late, but it connected with me as much as it connected with everyone else, and I think that should be the same for everyone, I think that should be the same for everyone, I think it should connect with you and i think there's no it's the destiny <laughs> if you watch attack on titan if you read attack on titan your destiny is that the story will be connected with you it will make you emotional it will make you cry so yeah anyways everyone um one final update uh, i was planning on a big week right but i kind of didn't want i kind of didn't get the chance to film any of this because i was busy with school um, but I was planning on making an Attack on Titan skit, releasing it on Monday, Wednesday, or Attack on Titan skit, releasing it on maybe Wednesday, Thursday, and Thursday, and when, and today, Friday, when the chapter comes out, well, I think it's actually Friday in Japan, that's why it came out yesterday, but I didn't know that, so sorry, um, but... Friday, well, I'd probably change it after realizing that, but Friday, uh, well, I, well eh, whatever, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm backsliding, whatever, but Friday, I'll just say, I was planning on releasing the, a song dedicated to Aaron Yeager, and, uh, the song was written and finished on early Thursday, yesterday, 
Um, I did it really fast because I did it right before and I and I couldn't and everything. So, uh, yeah, I written it and everything, and I was gonna record it uh, yesterday, but I get the opportunity to. So I was I'm probably gonna start recording today. But the problem is, um, I'm looking for a female voice actor. And, uh, and I just, I just couldn't find one at all. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to cut that part, but I want there to be sort of an emotional part of the rap, um, a part between Aaron and Mikasa. So I guess call it a song if you want. But yeah, it, it was, um, you're gonna like it. It's gonna come out probably tomorrow or Sunday on the second channel, which is now my music channel, as you guys know. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to me talk about this. This was still a very emotional roller coaster with, uh, you know, Attack on Titan and everything. And yeah, thank you, Hajime Isayama, for everything. And I'll see you guys with that skit and and a uh, song later this week. Peace out. I hate this thing, all right. Peace out.